Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to the continual building uh, videos of the Cirrus Moth designed by David Boddington. Um, it's getting to the point now where I'm approaching the end game in terms of the major um, building part of the process. One thing I have to do still is to install the aileron servos. Now the original design called for a bell crank arrangement. I'm not too keen on them. Um, I think there's an inherent possibility of building in slop into the system. And I think it perhaps goes back to the days when servos and radio gear in general was expensive. Um, and like the size of a house brick. So that's not as big an issue. Having said that, I am using quite beefy uh, servos. They're very powerful. The metal um, geared servos, which is definitely overkill for this application. But it's marginal, in my view, anyway, the difference in weight. And you're getting a servo that's never going to be put under strain. I need to make the panel here that's going to hold the servo and also the mounting blocks that the whole panel is going to be stuck into. So this is basically how I'm going to go about uh, doing that. The first thing I need to do, I've selected some quite beefy wood because after all it is holding the servos and the last thing we want is for them to become uh, unmounted uh, as you're flying. I have actually lost one aileron when I've been flying before. It's a weird experience. Managed to get the plane down fine, but um, uh, I don't want to be tempting fate and um, doing something that I can avoid at this stage. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out two panels, one for each wing, that will fit as a neat fit between these two ribs. We'll mark that off. Now... And I'll get those cut. I'll do them on the scroll saw. It's the easiest way to cut them. One eighth uh, ply I'm using here. And as I say, it's possibly a bit over the top. But it's ideal. So I'll cut that out. I'll cut both of them out and then we'll come back to the next bit of the job. Are you watching Cliff Harvey? No laser cutters here. <laughs> no, it's a uh, definitely old school building. So I've got two of those to cut out. I'll carry on doing that and then I'll clean them up with the uh, sand and uh, drum and then we'll try them out. This then is the hatch and if I pop it in you can see it's a neat fit. There you go. Now obviously we need something because this is a hatch and we need to remove it to act, get access to the servo. Um, we need something for that to be screwed down to. There'll be a hole in each corner and four screws to hold it in position. And for that I need something, well I need some hardwood. And I happen to have this available simply because it was the nearest to hand. It's actually ash, uh, which is a very tough wood. And it holds a thread really well. So if I have to take it off multiple times, it's not going to actually become very slack. So I'm going to make four blocks to go behind here. And once I've got the blocks cut, I'll show you how I'm going to locate them in the right depth so that the hatch is flush and doesn't fall through. So four little blocks there ready to glue into the corners onto the spars and the ribs. The four hardwood blocks have been cut out now and 
I've put them in position inside the hatch, turned it over obviously. I've got to push down flush with the work surface and I'm just going to tack it so it's in position. Uh, the last thing I want to do is actually glue it to the hatch. So I'm just going to tack it along that edge, the trailing edge there for that one. I'll do the same here. I do want to glue the hatch obviously to the blocks which would be a bit of a disaster. These you can't see as easily but I can guarantee I'm pushing them in nice and square. And I'm going to flick it over as soon as I think that one's taken. Being a little bit stubborn. There we go. Oh, brilliant. That one's pushed, it's pushed out. Look, a little bit of glue got on there before it taken a real hold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add epoxy into the onto these that the CA was simply to get it in the right position at the right depth which I've done so that then slots in and it's flush with it so I'll epoxy them in and then we're ready for stage two of the operation welcome back then so servo in position approximately just make sure everything's working there we go and what I would like to do is actually mount the servo so that the arm comes through about there and the push rod will come across and to the horn in this position actually if I put it that way it's even better because it's a closer closer run and that would work even better because it would be a shorter arm which is what we're looking for so if I put a, make a cut out in the side here and the horn will be glued on to this riblet here um, that will allow a very short run and I can mount the blocks on the inside to make for a very neat installation. I'll cut out the aperture here to allow the arm to move and then we'll come back and see what it looks like from the other side. I'm about to actually set up the servo now. Um, I can actually cut off one of these arms, they're not necessary. I'm placing the grommets in here. Um, they seem to be ignored when it comes to electric models because obviously there's not the same amount of vibration associated with electric compared to combustion engines. There's a lot more vibration and that obviously helps reduce that. Now, I have done a video on this it's such a simple thing but when it comes to actually putting these little brass hats in which prevent the grommets being totally crushed you put the bottom of the hat or you put the hat itself in the bottom if you do it the other way around when you tighten the screw down the sharp edge just simply digs into the wood that you're screwing onto and removes any of the benefit of the grommets so that's where you put them in so we'll put these in and I've cut a couple of little wooden blocks. There we go. I need to put these in to get the height right. These are the wooden blocks made out of the same ash. Here's the actual platform. Now it goes in like that. And I'm going to put the blocks in like this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sear them in position and I'm also going to put a balsa block behind to support this hardwood one, just simply to strengthen everything up. I may even put a smear of epoxy around everything once it's all set up. So that's basically how it's going to go. I'm going to square that up and then sear them in place. The CA alone, I don't think, will provide the right amount of support. But we'll see. So that one 
it's a bit like uh, spinning plates trying to hold it and show you it at the same time you know what I'm gonna to have to cut you off for a second while I line this up glue it and then we'll come back right juggling act over they are glued in place but I want to increase the strength and to do so I'm going to actually glue in place a balsa support which increases the surface area in contact with this plate there's one There's the other. There we go. And that's going to provide a really strong support for the servo. I'm not going to drop it in yet because there's a lot of CA that's leaked out there. Strong enough. I could just find where I've put the servo. We'll show you it in place and then I'll have to drill the holes to screw it in. That's the next stage. Here we have the servo in place. I hope that's clear. It's not screwed on yet. Nothing screwed in place yet. But you can see it's a neat installation. Of course the horn will have to be removed at the top. And I think you can also probably see that the servo is way over the top. Uh, but that's no matter. I don't think the weight's that much of an issue with this model. So we'll screw everything in and then we'll go to the control horn end of things. Here we have it. This is the servo mounted. Extremely strong. Way overkill. But that's what I want. A little bit heavier than perhaps it should have been but I'm fine with that. And there's the installation from the other side. I've only located two of the four screws into the blocks. Um, the rest could be put in later on and this is the actual horn so let's um, get our attention at that that's the horn that's supplied I quite like that so I'd like to use it um, I want to line it up with the horn there but unfortunately as you can see I hope you can see it's not in line with uh, the small riblet so I'm going to pack it out with some suitable wood and then I'll glue this horn directly to this riblet and it will also be attached at the front leading edge of the aileron and the rear and then we'll actually put the horn itself in and see how that goes. Let's crack on. In the final straight now so metal clevis I screw it in and allow plenty of adjustment on the inside and still adjustment there about a quarter of an inch. I've cut a little piece of silicon tubing which I can push over and onto there and that will hold that in position. Now I have to line it up with the horn on here and I have to put a bend in. And to do that, the first task is to actually open the clevis out so I can get it onto the, the horn, which I've now glued in. I'll put that packing in. We'll have a closer look in a second. So you can see that there's a piece of packing on the side there, and that provides a large surface area for the glue to stick to. Lining up the control surfaces, holding this level I'm going to mark on position of the bend if I make a total mess of this I have got a little bit of play on here far more than I'll probably need let's take this off nothing for the nails does it 
So that's the position of the bend. It's a very short arm, so it's going to be a very positive, hopefully, a very positive um, movement. And to put the bend in, for years I did it the hard way, and now I've got this device. So you line it up. I'm lining the pencil mark on the crown there. Put a bend in there. I need to cut that off. Haven't thought about that. I'll cut that off and then we'll come back and see, see if it fits. That's the little arm bent. You can see it's short so there'll be no flex or uh, unnecessary movement in it, I hope. Let's offer it up and see what happens. So in it goes. Um, I need to pull this out to see if I can manage to do so. Yeah, it's going to go. Oops, maybe not. There we go. That's a nice res uh, sounding click. Move the little rubber up there. And slight adjustment needed there perhaps. That's easily done. And we'll try it out. Slop free. I can see it's hitting there a little bit. I can remove some of the inside of this clevis it's not needed there we go happy with that there's a job done and i hope if anybody has to do this sort of job it's nothing too daunting just a little bit of logic how you approach it obviously it needs both doing that's a job that'll have to wait because if i zoom out you'll see this table has reached a critical mass of mess I can't find anything. So I think it's time to pause, tidy everything up and move on. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it up to now. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so. And what you can see here is a next conundrum I have. Although I've installed the engine, I'm not altogether happy with the way the exhaust's coming out. In fact, I don't want it to come out like that at all. So I'm having to have a head scratch and a think on how I'm going to get round that. I need it to come out directly in line uh, with the exhaust so I can put a more scale-like one in. But that's a problem further down the line. For now, thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with my uh, mumbling on. And I hope you get the chance to get out flying. If you don't, let's get creative and do some model building. Bye for now.